Uh, good evening, Gainesville High School families. Thanks for joining us. It's uh, 6.31. Um, sorry, we, we got the webinar live just, just at 6.30 and uh, I wanted to give a minute for uh, some of our families to join us who are, who are just now working through the process of logging on, but the, the number of attendees rose quickly and it started to level off. So um, we're going to get going. Um, again, I want to say thanks for being here. Uh, this is going to be a, a brief update. We're thinking in the region of a half hour. Uh, we're going to share with you some dates of future updates also. Um, the, the agenda for today is, um, first and foremost, talk about the the staffing uh, progress that we've made and introduce a couple of new faces to you that, that uh, I and we are excited about. Hopefully uh, the families that uh, are going to attend and students who are, will attend Gainesville High School are equally excited to meet some new faces. Um, I'll share again a few pictures of the, the progress the building has made in the last uh, three or four weeks. Um, I get the chance to get to the building about once every three weeks. Uh, at this stage and um, every time I step in the building my heart rate rises and my excitement grows um, seeing everything start to look and feel like not just a high school but our high school it's becoming Gainesville High School and um, uh, I found out that the, the uh, gym floor is going to be installed in the next couple of weeks and uh, carpet and floor tiles in the hallway and such so I'll, I'll share some pictures of the building um, we've got um, a little bit of uh, feedback about student uh, course selection, some good news, hopefully for, for several members of our community. Uh, so Mrs. Pomfret will, will share with you where we are with student course selection, the schedule, master schedule building process, which is the, the steps we take to try to ensure that each of our students gets the, get, uh, uh, receive a schedule of the coursework they need to progress towards graduation. And, um, and next steps, as far as our families are concerned, to, to monitor and stay on top of uh, student course selection moving into the, the coming school year. And then Mr. Aldridge is with us again tonight. He's going to go over, uh, really review or repeat some of the information uh, regarding preparation for athletic participation. Uh, we've hired several additional coaches, new coaches for some of our head coaching roles since the last time we we're online. So we'll share some of those names and email addresses. And, um, and then uh, I'll begin and end with some of the efforts that we will share more details of upcoming um, to do with how we want to engage students for either orientation or onboarding processes, um, giving parents and students opportunities for involvement. We're about ready to start building some capacity in those, uh, in those areas. So I'm going to go back and share my screen again. And we'll roll through our, uh, our presentation from there. Can one of the admin team confirm that the screen I'm sharing is the right screen? We're good? Yes. OK, thank you much. Um, all right, so here we go. Um, staffing progress. So. Uh, as of today, we have 86 instru instructional staff on board, and we have about three to go. Um, I, I think I shared last time we were online, I've, I, I have been involved in over 400 interviews since January. Um, it's a heavy workload and rewarding getting to um, build a team and choose the, the staff that will serve our community. But um, it was all encompassing. So some of the other projects, like building an orientation program for our students, and um, figuring out how SCA is gonna work and National Honor Society and those kinds of things have taken a back burner until we got the team assembled. We're now gonna migrate back into some of the logistical planning and uh, getting programs up and running for next year now that we're in really solid shape from a, a hiring perspective. The thing I'm excited about as far as instructional hires is that teachers have, uh, have actively pursued um, instructional roles at Gainesville High School from, from across the school system, the state and, and the nation. And I am really pleased with the quality of candidate we've been able to interact with and, and the vision of the various teams of teachers we've assembled. There's, there's a lot of will to serve our students. This is about student learning, supporting our students, helping our students uh, find individualized pathways to meet their goals and, and, um, and and attend to their passion academically. Um, but this is a group of teachers who really want to innovate and, and be on the vanguard of all the good things that are occurring in education. 
Um, from a classified perspective, we're um, in the process of hiring our custodial team. Uh, we've got about uh, nine staff to go in that area. And then we're going to move into hiring our secretarial staff, which um, all are critical and critically important roles in our school. Um, when you ask a principal who, who runs the building, it's, it's rarely the principal that is the most important cog in the wheel. It's, it's all of the other people who do the, the day to day work to make sure that, that the trains run on time, that the building's clean and that our students and staff have what they need. So we're going to make careful decisions with those hires. Um, I'm going to pause for a minute, however, and I'm going to say congratulations to Mrs. Pomfret, who is no longer, uh, actually, she is still our lead school counselor, but effective July 1, she will be our director of school counseling, so that's a promotion for her, and she will lead our student services team, um, all of the staff from counselors, registrar, through to our school nurse will come under her uh, leadership and supervision, so congr congratulations, Megan. Uh, I'm going to pause and let Troy Washington in, introduce himself as our second uh, assistant principal will come on board next year. Good evening, everyone. Um, glad to be here. My name is uh, Troy Washington. This is uh, my 27th year in education, uh, 16 of which were in or have been in Prince William, 11 in Fauquier County, um, where I've been uh, both a teacher and a coach. I recently moved back to Prince William uh, a couple of years ago with the aspirations of um, gearing towards administration. Uh, little did I know that this was going to be a possibility. So I'm really, really humbled, blessed, and really excited about this opportunity at Gainesville. Um, there's a lot of really good people in the leadership positions, uh, and we look forward to meeting all of you, both parents, students, to get this thing going. Um, if anything, if there's anything I can do for you, uh, please let me know. I am a, currently a uh, admin intern at Freedom High School, but if you have any questions or concerns, please give me a shout via email and I'll be glad to assist. And I look forward to meeting all of you. Thank you. Mr. Washington, I'm going to ask you to elaborate just a little bit. You're in a, you're in a department chair meeting with us um, a few, couple of days ago. <laughs> How many people had you either coached with or against, taught as a student or worked with that are on the, the faculty and staff next year? You put me on a spot. I don't want to uh, disrespect it was a, it anyone. Was, it, was it was a, a good number. number. Let's just say that. It was a good number. That's when you know you've been around for a while. <laughs> I'm pleased to have you on the team, Mr. Washington. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to introduce Dr. Robert Scott, who has joined our team as the uh, Pathways to Global Citizenship Program Coordinator. And good evening, folks. I will um, I will echo some of the things that Mr. Washington shared. I am um, I'm I'm happy to be here. I'm excited to be here. We have uh, Mr. Beach and uh, some members of the the central office staff have, have called on us to um, you know to bring into focus over the next year or so a program that you know, is, is rare in American high schools. And the idea that we, we understand the effect size that we get from involving students and parents in the conversation about the direction that students' um, educational experiences will go and will take. And, um, you know, that this is, this is that, that level of engagement and participation is, is uh, it's rare in traditional high schools. And so the, um, for, participating in conversations regarding ownership of the, the rubrics that we will use to, to challenge students, the process that we'll use to engage students in students and, and families in what your hopes and expectations are for your particular, your particular pathway or your extended learning experience. Um, all of those things we're going to work together over the, over the next uh, year to, to um, pilot and prepare and create some exemplars that we can then share with, with the community and with the staff as this program comes into focus. And so watch for more information from me regarding uh, ways that you can, you can participate in some of, some of those conversations. Um, I, we don't have a lot of specific detailed information for you right now, just because the, the steering committee of teachers that we're going to sort of get together to talk about the Pathways program Right now, many of them are neck deep in advanced placement and SOLs and things for the, for the next five weeks or so, but it's just, I'm excited to be here. Uh, as Mr. Washington said, happy to help. I have, I do have, I don't know the number of, of teachers or coaches who are on the staff at Gainesville who 
I knew as students or teachers in, in a previous life, but I've been a middle school teacher, a high school teacher, uh, adjunct professor at a number of, of universities. And uh, I was a special program coordinator in, in a past life and a, and a high school principal. And I'm hoping that all of that mileage, some of it on backcountry dirt roads, <laughs> admittedly, will help me bring some leadership and, and collaboration to this uh, program. Just happy to be here. Thanks, Dr. Scott. I think a couple of the staff we've hired were students at a neighboring high school when you were the principal there. They were, yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm gonna screen share again. Thanks to the team um, for introducing themselves. I'm excited that I get to work with this. Uh, this caliber of, uh, of educator moving forward. So we have one more administrative role to, to fill. We're um, in the process of um, scheduling interviews for an administrative intern. Um, so there will be one more team member coming in the next uh, couple of weeks. We'll introduce them as soon as we know who it is. Um, moving on from this slide, future webinars and planning. Um, we, we're going to promise our community that we'll have webinars on uh, May 26th, June 23rd, July 21st, August 18th. They're, they're not mandated. Um, if parents and students do not attend those webinars, any really important information that, that is covered will be covered in, in probably multiple other ways in multiple other forums. So it's really just, uh, I'll say a courtesy to meet any curiosity that may exist in terms of um, planning and, and upcoming efforts as far as the school's concerned. Um, so you'll know they'll occur, they'll be, they'll be 6.30 p.m. Um, we will have more effort to reach out to the community and involve stakeholders over time. So um, in the next week, we're going to send out uh, a, parents, a survey to our parents asking for any interest that uh, parents may have, individual parents may have in serving or being, being involved in decision making on our booster organization, that, that think athletic boosters. Um, the goal right now is to have a large booster organization that serves all of our programs. Uh, Mr. Eldridge will get into more of the details, obviously, when we, we get that group up and running and, and set some of the stage, set the table for, for the future work of that group. The, print, the PAC is the Principals Advisory Council. Um, the Principals Advisory Council is involved in, in helping me make decisions with regards to the continuous improvement plan for the school. What do we focus on using um, performance data and uh, the school systems uh, continuous improvement plan um, and then try to realize that plan in terms of how we structure our school budget and then the parent teacher student organization PTSO uh, is parents teacher students who want to collaborate for the good of the school for the good the good of um, groups of students in the school uh, work on behalf of supporting our teachers etc the mission of the PTSO varies often from school to school but it's an important body in, in most cases. So um, that, that is not um, inclusive of every parent opportunity. We'll be asking um, our parents, what else? Um, you know, if you have an engineering background or uh, um, a, a background in electronics and you wanna mentor members of our robotics team, great, let us know about that. If, um, if you have connections with um, somebody in DC who could get some of our government students uh, a, a trip to, to visit a congressman or woman, then um, you know, let us know. Um, if you have something that you want to offer longitudinally to Gainesville High School, then, then we'd love to hear about it. You may not hear back from us for a while. We're, we're going to keep a, a spreadsheet. We'll filter it so that the right people get connected with the right people for the things that we're trying to get off the ground between now and the start of the school year and then uh, and shortly thereafter, but we'll, we'll also keep this on the, these ideas, if you will, on file so that as we grow as a school and, and develop more ideas and more capacity to bring clubs and activities online, we'll, we'll reach back and, and leverage the expertise and the connections in our community where and when we can. So it won't be the last time we survey our parents, but that's coming in the next week or so, so that we can really start to get some of these um, advisory and support groups up and running. Um, I'm going to meet with a group of teachers after Monday. We have our, our first faculty meeting Monday, and I'm going to seek um, interest from our um, instructional staff to, to build our student advisory council process, um, get a group of students involved in, in leadership um, activities, 
probably closely tied to orienting new students and supporting new students and families as they um, literally find their way through the building. Um, so there's going to be more coming with that. Just know that we're in the early stages of planning for student leadership opportunities and we'll have a, a really strong group of teachers start to communicate through our normal platforms, the website, Twitter, and uh, School Messenger about um, anything that our students wish to volunteer for and get involved in. Um, allied to that, we've got another group of uh, faculty and staff who are volunteering to, to lead our orientation efforts. Um, I do realize my, my, my children are um, going to school in Prince William County. Uh, my, my son is going to middle school next year. And uh, I do realize that some of our neighboring schools have started their uh, transition and orientation processes already. Um, we're, we simply haven't been in a position to leverage the expertise of a, of a team of professionals to, to get that up and running yet. So that is our first priority um, after Monday's faculty meeting is to um, collaborate with a group of teachers and our counseling department to, to start the orientation process. And we'll push um, good information and um, um, advice, if you will, as soon as we are ready and able to publish it. And we'll, again, we'll do that through a couple of different avenues. It will be virtual initially um, as a, a quick um, precursor. Um, we're hoping to gain access to the building around mid-July now. Um, the building, uh, the construction process is going well. Um, in terms of us being handed a set of keys, it will be sometime during the month of July. And clearly we can't invite um, parents and families to the school until we until we have it um, approved for occupancy and, and the buildings turned over to us. So once that happens, I'm, I'm very interested in, in allowing students and, and families to visit the school. And I'm, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic that we'll be able to give small group tours of the building um, safely, whatever that means, given um, health, uh, health guidelines that exist come, come July. Um, and then we'll do again for the students um, with our parents uh, a, a more uh, rounded orientation experience. Again, um, COVID uh, mitigation guidelines are, are, are going to um, drive the planning for that. So I, I'm not going to share exactly what that could look like. Frankly, we don't know yet, but we're going to be planning for two or three different options as we as we move from the spring towards the summer. Mr. Eldridge has started uh, conversations about club and activities, clubs and activities. Um, we're going to get some of our um, groups off the ground early. Obviously, National Honor Society is something that we'll try to start early. Um, the um, um, look at some of the affinity groups that we can um, launch early in our existence to give students um, leadership opportunities and opportunities to connect. Um, uh, over different issues and, and, and perspectives. Um, robotics is something that we'd like to get off the ground early. Um, but again, we'll be looking at um, faculty and staff and, and parents as well to, to be involved in, in sponsorship as we go. I think it'll be a, a slow build. We'll, we'll get off the ground what we can early in first semester. Um, and then we'll, we'll try to keep up with the interests of our students after that. <clears throat> One thing we are planning um, probably before the orientation acts occur and um, maybe before the first booster and principals advisory meeting is um, a, a series of meet and greets. Um, the idea being, well, well, think of it as a pop-up storefront. We, we don't have our own physical storefront that we can invite you to yet. So um, we're looking for a venue um, where maybe we could have uh, myself, maybe somebody from the counseling team, a few coaches, department chairs, and we'll publicize long and far enough in advance that if, if you're able to, to get to this venue, um, we'll be there for an hour or two and be happy to answer questions and um, just connect on a more personal level than a, than a Zoom meeting. So more to come, we'll select the location and, and the date. And then we'll push that out through Twitter, our website, and then through the, the messenger service. Hopefully it's um, attended at a level that, that keeps everybody safe and distanced um, while we while we get to know each other. Okay, we sent out a survey last week and, and said, what, what do you want to know about during this update? And uh, one of the, the predominant uh, responses was, we want to know about band and color guard. And um, if, you, if you haven't followed our Twitter feed, that, that's the source of a lot of in, information at the minute. It's the, the, the quickest and easiest way we can push information 
although we're pushing um, the same information out often through School Messenger and on our website. April 29th, there will be a, um, an information meeting via Zoom um, for our band program and Color Guard. And if you go to our Twitter feed, you can find the, the Zoom link to, to register and participate in that. When we get to the end of this presentation, I'll, I'll share again the, uh, the Twitter handle for Gainesville High School. Um, <clears throat> robotics was asked about, will we have a robotics program? The answer is yes. Um, it takes a, an awful lot of work and, and, and uh, people to, to stand up a, a successful robotics program. So I'm hoping to have an FRC and VEX program next year. Um, if we get one of the two up and running, that, that's a good start. My goal is to have both VEX and FRC active at Gainesville High School by the end of next year. Um, <clears throat> one of the questions was about Spiritware. And uh, we've been working with a, a vendor called BSN. Uh, BSN's a, a nationally known um, sports apparel and equipment uh, provider, um, often for high schools and colleges. They're, they're going to stand up a, a storefront for us. So there will be Gainesville High School hoodies, T-shirts, baseball caps, um, shorts, joggers, those kinds of things. Um, with some of the logos that we've developed and, and um, you'll have seen one of them in, in this slide, in fact. Um, again, no pressure to buy. This is not intended to be a health and PE uniform. This is simply um, parents and students have said, hey, when can I get my Gainesville t-shirt? Well, there's your answer. Um, we'll push that link out when the store is built and it's got a, a variety of products that um, our community members can buy. Um, we're working on getting some goodies for our students too for when they arrive. So again, no pressure for, for anybody to buy anything, but it's there if you want to. And the logos will be approved logos that we've provided for the vendor. Um, <clears throat> next year's schedule, what will it look like? I, I don't know. Um, I have some suspicions as to where it's going, but uh, it's not my decision. Those decisions are made above me at the superintendent staff and then the school board level. Uh, my belief is in early May, the superintendent will make recommendations to the board and the school board will, uh, will, will vote and adopt um, various aspects of a plan for returning to school next, next school year. Um, through Richmond, um, there was a bill passed that um, guaranteed students five days of um, educational services face-to-face -face for next year. So there will be some option or the, there will be an option for students to return to school five days a week again, pending um, local transmission rates and, and outbreaks, et cetera, but uh, more to come in early May, we're two or three weeks away from that. Will it involve masks? I don't know. I, I would anticipate that if we're in school, face-to-face uh, -face in large numbers, that, that masks would be a requirement, but guidance changes and changes again. So we'll see what happens in the, in the coming months. Transportation was a question. Um, if you are a student or, or your, your child is a student, uh, attending Gainesville High School as a specialty program transfer from one of the schools that allow students to transfer to us. Um, you should have received the, the express bus stop list as you received acceptance to the specialty program, the pathways program. If you're not a transfer student, if you're a base school student and you're zoned to Gainesville High School, you'll get the bus route information late summer. It's usually about a week before school starts. Again, I don't control that. Uh, our transportation department spends months um, working through various permutations to efficiently build uh, bus routes. Gainesville is a new school. All of the routes are going to have to be built from scratch. So um, that information comes later in the summer. Um, we had a lot of questions about the Wentworth Green community, and I, I, I get it. Um, my understanding, and, and somebody may correct me if I'm, if I'm inaccurate, my understanding is that some of the students from Wentworth Green who attend Gainesville Middle School walk to Gainesville Middle School. And there will be a path, there already is a path from Gainesville Middle School through to Gainesville High School. So there's a good chance those students will, will, will walk, but again, transportation may provide busing from that community. I, I don't know yet, I haven't had confirmation either way. Dual, DE is a dual enrollment where students study um, courses for college credit in high school. Um, we will not be offering dual enrollment next year. Um, that's not to say that it won't be offered in, in future years. Um, with a, uh, most of our dual enrollment coursework exists in, in grades 11 and 12, and we don't have a senior class next year. Our junior class is, a, is right around 195 students. 
and we simply can't do everything with um, with a relatively small population, small school enrollment. So, first and foremost, we have a, a, a selection of advanced placement courses on offer for next year, uh, um, in a couple of elective areas and a couple of core areas. In some cases, the enrollment in um, AP classes is low, and we have to subsidize those classes to ensure that they run and students have access to advanced coursework. Um, we, we're just not in a position today to offer dual enrollment and advanced placement and the general coursework in, in multiple areas. So we're going to start by building our AP capacity, and then we're going to loop back around in subsequent years to strategically offer dual enrollment coursework where it makes sense to um, dual enrollment's a, a growing concept. Um, it has a benefit to students. It can be a win-win in terms of um, accessing academic rigor, um, earning college credit, and, and obviously being prepared to go off and be successful either in the workplace or in college. Um, I, I would argue similar benefits to advanced placement coursework also. Um, so the two can work hand in hand. Um, to, today, we're going to start with a small selection of AP courses and then build from that. And then finally, we had some questions about special education and, and special education is, is such an individualized um, um, experience for, for our students that it's hard to answer too many questions in this forum. So I'm defaulting to the IEP meetings that um, occur for many of our students. Um, we will have a Gainesville High School staff member where possible in each of the IEPs that are um, being scheduled or have been scheduled in preparation for next year. So. Uh, right now, it's John, John Treadwell and Andrew Barton have been uh, in most of those meetings. So we're going to try and answer questions uh, about special education services through that forum. However, if, if a parent um, or a student has a specific question about special education um, services and um, IEP related services, obviously, then um, you're welcome to reach out to any of the staff that are in the Zoom meeting today and we'll do the best we can to answer those questions. But we're probably not going to have a um, discrete or, or separate webinar that addresses special education services again, because the, the questions get into some quite specific um, territory that the and, and then confidentiality can come, come into play. So we're, we're going to try and answer those questions on an individual basis when we can. Okay, <clears throat> moving forwards, um, progress of the building. That, that's the building again from about a month ago. That, that's a slide that I shared previously. Um, the grass is a lot greener now, and um, certainly the, the stadium and baseball and softball fields have made progress, but um, some of the bigger changes have occurred inside the building. Um, the middle image is uh, some wood paneling and actual colored paint, and then a light fixture that's gone up in the school library. Uh, the image on the left, again, is, is the light fixture that's going to go right above the circulation desk. And then the image on the right is actually the, the ceiling and the cafeteria. So a lot of the infrastructure is in place. And I'm sure ceiling tile will be going in um, in, in the not too distant future. Um, so small details. I know it's a lot of work still for the construction company, but um, it's starting to look and feel like our school now. Um, the left image there is the auxiliary gym. So there's a, a little splash of Gainesville High School's colors in there and uh, the construction team's prepping the floor to put the floor tile down in the auxiliary gym, which is a huge facility for an auxiliary gym. Up, high up on the left, you can see the, the, the plastic covering around the batting cage, and then there's a curtain that will drop down in the middle of the gym so we can partition off the auxiliary gym. You can see Gainesville's colors in, in one of our two cafeteria serving lines. Um, so the kitchen equipment's uh, begun to be installed, and you can see the tile work there. The floor tile will be going in just shortly. And then on the right hand side, that's uh, a gymnasium. The, the hardwood's been delivered. It's curing now um, in the gym and um, that hardwood will be installed uh, in the next couple of weeks is, uh, is what I'm hearing. On the top uh, left is again, the auditorium. Um, the, the structures in the ceiling are housing a, a soundproofing uh, material for um, acoustic purposes, um, I guess the term is clouds. Um, those clouds are being installed. So even since I took that picture last week, um, the auditorium's changed. The floor that you see is now completely covered in cardboard boxes um, containing the seats. So um, the seats are about to be installed in the auditorium, which is going to be really exciting to see. 
Below that is our black box theater. We've got floor tile in. There's a sound system in there and some of the, the connection points for the lighting, um, they're installed and the curtain tracks installed also. Uh, bottom right is an art, one of our art classrooms, one of three art classrooms overlooking the courtyard. Again, some of the cabinetry and floor tiles are in. And then top right is the extended learning space that I've made such a fuss of over the last um, few months. So the wood paneling's in place for some of the presentation areas. Each of the spaces where you see the wood paneling will have uh, uh, a large scale uh, to touch display. Uh, think of a, a 65 or 75 inch t touch, touch screen TV. And then we've got some comfortable furniture around there for students to, to sit in and collaborate and, and, and do presentations. The classrooms either side are our world language classrooms. Um, top right is a math classroom. Uh, top, sorry, top left is a math classroom. Top right is a project lead the way engineering classroom. We've got a science lab. And then bottom right is our choral uh, class, chorus classroom or choral room. Um, we're gonna have uh, some movable risers in there and, and obviously some other embellishments, a big smart board and uh, the ceiling tiles about to go in. Uh, the left-hand side is a construction lab, uh, the dirty space of a construction lab, and then the, the glass storefront is the access point into a, a clean space where students have access to um, other technology. Um, you can see the Gainesville High School signs in place. Um, it's good to see that go up. And then on the right-hand side is our um, fitness center where our, our weightlifting equipment and cardiovascular equipment will go. Okay, that's that's a building update. I'm gonna pass over to Mrs. Pomfret, who's gonna give us a quick update uh, with some good news about our academic uh, advising process. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Beach. Um, so academic advising, um, I've been working with students via Zoom, um, over the phone and through email. Um, and if you want to see the courses that your child has chosen, their course requests, you can look in parent and in student view under course requests. So you'll see there's an image there on the screen. This is a screenshot of my own child's, um, my, my parent view for my kiddo. And at the bottom there, you'll see it'll say course requests. Sometimes when you click on that, it'll take you to a grid and you'll only see the kinds of classes listed. For example, it'll say like language arts, math, but not the actual class. Um, so if you take your finger and you hold that grid down and you you move it um, to the left, you'll be able to see the actual class names. But all of their courses are listed in there. The minute that I make an update on my side, it is automatically updated in parent and student view. Um, so please look in there. For ASL, it's very, very exciting for American Sign Language. We did um, hire a teacher, we're very excited. We will be offering ASL one and two next school year. Um, if your child had it as one of their original requests, I went back and added ASL1 back in there if you had contacted me with the, the replacement. Um, if your child was on the wait list for ASL1 and 2, I went back through and also updated that if it was clear to me. There were a couple of students where it wasn't clear, and I reached out to those children, uh, those students, excuse me, through their Prince William County email address. So if you're like, oh, my kid, my kid was on that wait list, um, ask them to check their email. I, I'm not sure that students are checking it all the time. Um, for our students that are in ASL 3, it still will be through Virtual Virginia. Um, due to whether or not we had an ASL teacher um, from last time we spoke with you guys, that class would have been through Virtual Virginia because it was so small. Those students were contacted today just to update them that, yes, we have a teacher, but you will still be through Virtual Virginia. Um, a letter is going to be mailed out to our community um, hopefully by the end of next week. It's called a course request verification letter. There'll be some information for me, kind of recapping a few things that I'm saying today. And then on the back side, we'll also have your students course request. So you can check in parent view. Parent view is always the most up-to-date information. So I'm gonna be printing these letters probably on Monday. So if you make changes Tuesday, the letter may not be up to date. So please make sure that you um, are checking what's in parent view. Okay. Um, on that letter, we'll also include information about how you make changes. The last day that we make changes will be June 4th that we will accept changes. And just because you request something, I can't guarantee that you're going to get it. If the class has been closed, which means we have too many students in the class, um, I won't be able to add it. 
If the class has been canceled, obviously I cannot. Um, so I recommend trying to have as many changes done as quickly as possible. Don't wait to the last minute. You always can see your child's course requests in parent and student view under course requests. Um, the county always releases, or they, at least they have the last few years, they will release um, schedules about a week before school starts, and you will be able to see those in parent and student view. So if you don't have your parent view or account set up, please reach out so that we can help you. Um, right now, you may need to go through your child's current school to get help with that, but if we can help you connect with the right people, we will. But you really want to make sure that that parent view account is set up. Um, there are some courses, typically AP courses, that were using Virtual Virginia um, uh, because we weren't, we didn't have enough kids to run the classes in the building. I've already contacted those students. They've already been impacted, and uh, if they've been impacted, they've been enrolled um, in the courses, or we've come up with an alternative plan for them. One question that was asked in the chat, well, there were two questions. The first was, is ASL considered a world language for the advanced diploma? Yes, it is. Um, so it does go towards the world language requirements there. Another question was about the diploma type differences. Um, there are a lot of differences. Well, the main difference between the advanced and the standard is the advanced requires four years of math, science, social studies, and requires a world language. The standard diploma has three years of math, science, and social studies and does not require a world language, though it can be used. When I'm done with my, my part here, I'm going to put a link in the chat that um, breaks down the difference between the advanced and the standard diploma. And in previous webinars, I've gone into much more detail about the differences in the diploma types. There are some courses that we'd like for you if your student has an interest that we um, would really like for your kids. If they have an interest that they want to sign up, they can um, definitely change their course requests. This would include journalism and yearbook, our engineering program. We've got the Project Lead the Way program. Um, we strongly encourage you to think about the introduction to engineering or our technical drawing course, um, any of our performing arts. So any of our music, orchestra, band, chorus, theater. We would love to see your students explore their interests and also our leadership class. We don't want the pathways um, and following strictly to the pathways from keeping students in the courses that they're really interested in. Some of your kids may be like, well, I wanna be a doctor, so I have to do the biomedical science pathway. We'd really, but I also love orchestra and I wanna do orchestra too. You know, it, there is a way that we can work with them over the next few years to make sure that they're getting both of those in there. So please don't let the pathways be something that is restricting your child from following their interests. So if you if there are interests in those courses um, on the Canvas page, on the GHS Counseling Canvas page, if your child wants to make a change, there is a link right at the top of the GHS Counseling Canvas page. There's a form where you can submit changes to me and I will process them as quickly as I can. So thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pomfret. Before I move um, move on, there were, I just had a chance to scan the Q and A and and obviously listen to Ms. Pomfret, some of the things Ms. Pomfret shared. So just just to cover some ground um, with regards to those those questions that I haven't addressed yet. Um, parking: will, will students be able to drive to school if they have a, a valid driver's license? The answer generally is yes. Um, we we will have parking on on the school grounds. Um, students will be required to have a parking permit to uh, park on school grounds. We have um, a security specialist coming on board. Um, his name's Matthew Doyle. Uh, he's gonna be a retired Fairfax County police officer. Um, he will um, work with myself to come up with a time frame and a process for distributing par parking passes. Students will have a chance um, probably pr a week prior to the start of the school year uh, to come on campus and, uh, and and be able to 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 grab a parking pass, so um, we'll push that information out. We'll make sure it's loud and clear for the students who who need it. Um, but it's um, it's something that we'll get to a little bit further down the line. Um, will the road to Lifetime Fitness um, behind Lifetime Fitness open up and push through from Limestone Drive to University, where the school is being built? The answer is yes. Um, I, my understanding is that. The contract for that that construction work went out to bid, and um, um, a, a construction company has been selected to build that road. I don't have an exact time frame, but I, I think it's going to happen at some point in the next uh, few months. Um, 
So there will be two, the two access points to the school, one uh, along University Boulevard from uh, Wellington and then the other along the road at the back of Lifetime Fitness from, from Limestone Drive. And then students will be able to walk uh, on a footpath through from Gainesville Middle to, to Gainesville High School. <clears throat> Just to reiterate the, the five day a week, uh, will students be in, in school five days a week face to face? The answer is that option will be available, but, but there are some permutations uh, and nuanced um, variables that um, we're, we're waiting to hear what that's gonna look like. But the option for students to be in person next year, uh, my understanding is, is gonna be on the table. Um, we had one community member ask if, if we can make sure that it, uh, critical information is on our website in, in the event that uh, a, a family member or families don't use social media as, as, uh, as much as a communication tool. And the answer is yes, we're, we're trying to warehouse all of the important information that we want to share on our Gainesville High School webpage, um, really important information regarding scheduling and other things that we want our families to know about, we're also pushing out through the school messenger process. So uh, parents, please make sure that your email address is, uh, is up to date um, so we can effectively communicate by email as well. And um, if, you're, if you're rolling your eyes saying, I get far too much email, I don't get a chance to read it all, that, that's exactly where I am as a parent right now. So I, I get it. So that's why we're trying to push information a few different ways. Um, graduation requirements, Mrs. Pomfret went over. Um, they're also described in full also in the high school course catalog. So if you go to the Prince William County webpage or go to Google and, and Google search Prince William County Schools course catalog, um, there is a page dedicated to describing the, the graduation requirements by um, by cohort of students. Okay, enough for me. Here's uh, Mr. Eldridge, who's going to talk about athletics. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Jason Eldridge. For those of us that haven't met, um, thank you all for joining us this evening. Just going to give you a quick snapshot of our athletic programs real quick. I, I am also uh, covering our, our fine arts activities as well as our clubs and organizations. So it's not that those things aren't going to be covered uh, at some point in, in our programming. This will be specific to athletics. You'll see on the first slide here, we are going to be class 6A, even though our student body population is about 1,300 with no senior class and a very light junior class, we are still going to be competing um, with the 6A Cedar Run. That list of schools is there. Every other competition-based event we have is up to the program. Um, I am pushing us, to be honest, to go with smaller school competitions and out of league uh, just to start, given our numbers. Um, the next slide, athletics, you'll see our full list there. There is one um, omit, that is golf. Uh, we are still in the process of hiring a golf coach and finding uh, a venue to house uh, our golf team. Um, I'm going to drop my email in, in the chat when I'm done here. If anybody has any questions, comments, concerns, um, anybody has any close ties to, to anybody in, in the local golf courses or golf community, I could certainly use the assistance um, at this point. But you can see we are going to be offering a full load. Everything in, in theory is starting at the varsity level with the exception of football. Football this coming year will be just a JV and freshman team. Now, being able to have the capacity to provide those levels is going to depend on how many athletes are involved in the programs. I do anticipate us housing full programs with freshman JV varsity teams. We'll see how the numbers shake out as we go. Um, the next slide, fall sports. These are the uh, list of coaches that we've hired currently. Again, we're still in the process of acquiring a golf coach. These are their contact emails. All of this information can be found on our Prince William County Gainesville High School website. If you go to the top menu option about us, the drop down, you will see activities and athletics. You click on that link, it will provide you a snapshot page of all of our coaches and all of their contact emails. So as you go, please, if there's a sport or program that is of interest to you, please make note of their contact information write it down. You can also, again, contact me when I put uh, my email in the chat as well. There's your fall sports list. There's your winter sports list to follow. I won't, I won't go through all the names specifically, but 
we'll keep it up there for a couple of seconds for anybody who has any specific needs. And then spring sports would be the, the tail end of that. Again, really excited for this team. We've got a lot of experience. We also have hired some youngsters and, and that kind of caters to me a little bit. Youthful energy is always a good thing uh, at the high school level I've found, uh, particularly in my uh, experience as a coach. Um, important dates. This is all really gonna depend as Principal Beach alluded to when the permits come in for us to have occupancy in the building to be very honest. But what we're gonna try to do is once we're in the building, take that first week to kind of get settled with all of our assets, storage, scheduling and uh, facilities. And then that week leading up to the first play date in the fall, which is our first activity date, excuse me, July 29th, we're gonna try to probably house daily registration events uh, for everybody to come through for fall sports, submit their paperwork. There is a variety of things that need to be accomplished prior to complete registration to include um, a VHSL physical, a concussion education, um, and, and any other subsequent paperwork item that a program specific needs. Now, when you look at some of these dates, July 29th, fall athlete, athletics will begin. Winter, November 8th. So if you're not participating in a fall program, it's okay to wait a little bit of time to get your paperwork in. I wouldn't wait too long. And VHSL physicals are only clear for the following school year by May 1st of the previous spring. So as an example to that, May 1, which is in literally 10 days um, of this coming spring here is if you have a physical on a VHSL form post dated from May one or after that is good for the entire following year. Um, spring won't begin until February. So again, if you're just a spring sport program interest, it's okay to wait a little while, but be mindful off season activities that are sponsored by the school. You must have paperwork from a VHSL perspective in order to be clear. That's a Prince William County regulation no athlete can participate in any school sponsored activities without a cleared physical. So again, don't wait too long, but you don't have to get that push in the first uh, week we're in the building in the middle of July, if you're not participating in a fall sport. Eligibility. Um, when you look at your medical paperwork there, I did allude to this emergency care, VHSL physical form, the concussion ed. I do believe concussion ed will be offered online. That's my suspicion. Um, Incoming freshmen traditionally in Prince William County have had to do an in-person class with the ATC of the school, our certified athletic trainer. I don't know how that's gonna shake out with mitigation strategies surrounding COVID and our health guidelines. I do suspect that virtual education courses for concussion will be offered to satisfy this requirement. Um, more information will come on that as soon as we solidify it. Academic eligibility. If you're an incoming freshman, you get a one-time clearance through the VHSL and Prince William County entering into high school. Typically, when you are to become eligible for an activity at the high school level, we base your eligibility on the previous semester's grades. And in Prince William County, is a little more strict than the VHSL. But freshmen, they get a pass. So if you didn't do so well as an eighth grader, all is cleared, you get a clean slate, you automatically come in eligible to participate. Now, second semester, your freshman year, and that goes down into the non-freshman uh, page that we have here. Um, that depends upon your grades from the previous semester. Now that's not quarter. Quarter grades are really doubled, right? First and second quarter equal a semester. Third and fourth quarter also equal a semester. In the VHSL, you have to pass five courses with a D or better and be concurrently enrolled in the existing semester with five courses to obtain credit. I mentioned this because if you're gonna take a course that you've already earned credit for in a previous semester at the high school level, because let's say you wanna earn a better grade for that course, that course does not count towards your earnable credit courses the five minimum that you must take. So please make sure that when you're signing up for classes that there are at least five classes in your current enrollment form that are for credit 
earning options, okay? It's very important to note that we have had, in, I have had incidents in the past where kids have taken a class they've already earned credit for and deemed them ineligible. So please be aware of that. Prince William is a little more strict than the VHSL on previous semester eligibility. Not only do you have to have passed five courses the previous semester, two of those grades have to be at least a C or better. So it is a little more strict than the VHSL state guidelines. So I do wanna make, make sure that that's clear to everybody. When you come in, if you're like a, a sophomore or a junior coming into Gainesville, we're gonna look at your last semester's course grades. You have to have passed five and two of those grades have to be a C or better. Again, any questions with that, please feel free to email me, I'll, I'll drop a chat in. Um, very excited to meet everybody. Uh, as Mr. Beach alluded to, we are gonna be getting an activity booster club up and running. As people and community members have been contacting me, kids alike, I have been saving their emails. I am gonna put together a mass invitation email probably in late May uh, to get us started on the initial organizational stages of the situation. I am excited about the staff we have both from an administrative to a, a teaching perspective as well as the coaches. And I'm looking forward to meeting everybody. Thank you for, for coming tonight. Okay, just to wrap up, um, there's our website. Again, that's uh, the source of uh, a lot of the information we, we have either talked about or that we've talked about coming your way. So if you haven't gone to the webpage, uh, make sure you know how to find your way there, gainesvillehs.pwcs.edu. Um, Twitter, again, is another good uh, location for quick and easy information. We're trying to push everything through three avenues, website, Twitter, and um, through the school messenger service so that's information parents must find out about, parents and students must find out about. Um, if you're curious about the instructional staff that um, is coming on board, we're trying to introduce uh, our community to two or three of our teachers a week. Um, our teachers are, are putting together a, a quick introductory, I'll call it a card, an introduction card that, that's been pushed out on Twitter. And then we're replicating some of that uh, information on our webpage under the, the staff uh, tab. So again, we're, we're trying to keep on top of um, letting everybody know what's going on, but there's, there's gonna be a lot more coming in the next three, three to five weeks as we gear up uh, at a, an increasing rate for the coming school year. So, uh, with that being said, I'll, I'll echo Mr. Aldridge's sentiment. I'm very excited about uh, the coming school year and, and uh, ultimately getting to meet our students when the school year begins uh, in the summer. Thanks for joining us. And uh, again, the next webinar is going to be the, the last week in May. Um, so um, we'll send out an invitation if you want to continue to be part of these uh, information updates. Thanks for your time. Have a good evening.